Hello, willkommen and bienvenue to 2024. Happy New Year. This is the first The Unfinished walkthrough of the year, and um, I'm excited to start it. So should we just leap straight on in? Sure, why not? Now, as you can see from the screen, it's Zebra again, and we love Zebra, don't we here? We certainly do. This is the Dark Zebra. More on that in a moment. Um, this should have come out last November, I think it was, I was originally planning, um, but for some reason I decided to injure my shoulder like an absolute tit, playing Wii Boxing with my eight-year-old daughter. So professional. Uh, and then we had several issues with um, heating and plumbing in the house, which meant we had no hot water and had a new boiler put in and all that. So just over there, out of shot, um, in the attic space next to my studio. So things were a bit of a disaster for a while. And um, But finally, I'm fit and well enough to be back in the studio and doing work and so cracking on with some releases. Now, those of you with good memories, is that you? It might be. Uh, we'll remember that last year I released a double volume Zebra soundset release called Apotheosis. Now, this was a collection of sounds that come from various synth programming sessions for films and TV and all sorts of things that didn't didn't make the cut or weren't quite right for the project or other reasons. And during that process of collating the sounds for Apotheosis 1 and 2, I found that um, I had a lot of drum loops that I'd done in uh, Zebra HZ. Um, and that I'd already got, I think there's, there's like 70 across both Volume 1 and Volume 2 already. And I still had loads more. Um, they couldn't, I couldn't fit them all in. I felt it was too much. Um, so what I decided to do was do an expansion pack that is just drum loops, which I think is quite a cool idea. I've not released a sound set before that was one specific type of sound. Um, so we'll see whether this is an idea you like. Um, I've enjoyed putting it together. Um, I've done some new stuff for it as well because I was enjoying it so much. Um, but yeah, let's jump in and listen to some sounds. We're starting off with Zebra HZ rather than Zebra 2 because these sounds were all originally made in Zebra HZ. Quite often when I'm doing the bespoke film and TV and game work, I am working in Zebra HZ rather than Zebra 2. But there is also a Zebra 2 version, so we will come on to that in a bit. But let's go with the first sound, which is Agent X. It's a nice, dirty, organic, deep sound. Okay, there you go. Now, because I'm only having to hit one key to play this, <laughs> this is why this is a nice easy one to come back to after injuring my shoulder. Uh, break beats. That's lots of fun. If we just look on the screen, so we've got three channels going on, which is probably a kick channel, snare channel, and a hi hats channel. Um, and you can control all sorts of exciting things over here. So we've got filter, delay, tone, noise. There's XY pads on pretty much every patch. Uh, some will control sort of this sort of thing, an overall control, but I think there are some where you can control individual types of sound within the loops as well. Nice and atmospheric. So we've got stuff that's good for underscore as well as action. And of course, because it's in a synth, um, any sound can be action or underscore, depending on the pace of your, the tempo of your, your cue, your, your track, because everything will just naturally work with the tempo change. So playing something like drumstruck libraries, uh, drumstruck libraries, obviously, you know, there's going to be a point at which it's at the wrong speed, the wrong tempo, and you're going to get artifacts. Using it straight out of Zebra, you don't get that problem. So here's another organic one. Using comb filters to get that sort of natural organic sound. and subtle. A 
And of course, also, the other added bonus you get from it being within the synthesizer rather than being a drum sample library is that the loops will be tonally different up and down the keyboard as well. Right, let's try playing that an octave up. So it's only subtle in this one. And then an octave down. But it does mean with the organic ones, you can you can tune them to your track better, so it's, that's quite useful, I think. What I love about doing loops in Zebra is obviously the variety you can get. You've got the organic kind of hand drum vibes like this, and then you can do analog stuff, and you can do weird FM noise stuff. So there's literally very little limit to what you can do percussion-wise. Of course, the other thing is that you can slightly change the rhythms as well. So um, is this one? I don't think this one's being controlled by ARP. Let's just double check on global effects. So this act, no, this one is. But you can see that snap that you're getting with the noise snare sound is being controlled here by the um, ARP mod. Um, so you can change it there. But there's other patches that are entirely controlled by the MS, uh, MSEGs, the uh, multi-stage envelope generator. And there you can change the patterns there as well. So it's really, really flexible way of working with drums. In my opinion, <laughs> I think it's better than having a sample library. Because you've got so much extra control. And also it's better for me <laughs> because I don't then have to um, program a contact library and all that sort of business because, um, I don't know, it looks complicated. Oh, nice and deep. That's big. So there's a hundred patches, um, all originally designed in Zebra HZ. And then what I've gone and done is I've done uh, Zebra 2 versions, and we'll play through some Zebra 2 patches in a bit. Um, almost, well, basically the exact opposite of what I do with my dark editions of my, my general Zebra handsets in that um, I've just pulled the HZ patch into Zebra 2 and um, given it a bit of a rework or a bit of a remix. Um, and made something a little bit different with it. Sometimes I've gone quite close to the original patch where I think I can do just something subtly different. And other ones are very different. And I'm just taking it in a whole new direction. So there's lots of variety. Imagine this one's uh, envelope one. So here we see that's quite clearly the kick. And then we've got the rattle of the, the hats. And that's it for this one. So no snare on this one. It's more of a underscore vibe, clicking on random things that I'm doing. I will be a bit rusty with videos. It's um, well, about three months since the last one. 
But as you can see, it's a really good sort of grab bag for just finding new rhythms that you want to work with. You're doing a cue and you think, oh, I need some more percussive stuff. Open this up and away you go. This one's in 7-8 time. I don't think there are many that are in different time signatures, but um, with it being made in Zebrak, of course, you can alter the time signature, especially easy if it's the ARP, but perfectly easy to do with the multi-stage envelopes as well. Let's have a little look at the performance here. Filter's really obvious. Opening filter. Closing filter. And then delay of uh, reverb, so... Dry as a bone down here. Wet as a... A bone that's been dropped in the sink? I don't know. Is there a wet as a comparison? I don't want to know. Actually, probably. Then oscillator and comb, fiddle with tuning and stuff there. Okay, let's keep going. Lots of nice crunchy stuff. And while this um, collection was inspired by the films and TV and games I was working on at the time. Um, like Apotheosis, it was also inspired. I was tweaking patches to fit with um, things I was listening to. Um, you know, stuff like... Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what I put, but like Fast X and uh, that the Luther film. So Lorne Balfe, uh, Tyler Bates, um, Tyler... The other Tyler, him... Um, various people, um, but there's also, because it's just loops, um, it immediately took me back to um, some sort of early Harry Griggs and Williams scores, particularly something like Phone Booth, which is very loop heavy. So in many ways, it's got a kind of, um, well, I like to think, it's got a kind of distorted reality kind of um, vibe to it. That classic sample library by uh, the legendary Eric Persing for Spectrosonics, wasn't it? You know, distorted reality and distorted reality were over absolutely everything in sort of the mid to late 90s and the early 2000s. And probably been used, I just imagine, still now. Yeah, so in many ways, I mean, you know, I'm not saying this is anywhere near as good as distorted reality because that's just absolutely legendary, but it has a similar function. You can drop in loops from this into your tracks and, and you know, you can either add rhythms and grooves to something you've already started writing on, or you can begin with these loops and create that sort of, um, those pulses, those rhythmic pulses to begin with and then work around them. So 
there's lots of different ways you can you can do stuff with it. Right, we're gonna swap over to the Zebra 2 patches now. Um, so let's just click there, make sure that works, and bring lovely Zebra 2 up. Hello, Zebra 2. So like I say, this is the Zebra HZ patches brought into the Zebra 2 and then reworked to make them something similar, but different. Something like that. <laughs> one that will certainly stick out in a mix. And then you can do wonderful organic stuff like this so it sounds like real drums which is great. So within total there being 200 loops. I know it's really easy to sort of use up <laughs> sample libraries these days, particularly um, the sequence stuff. I always find, actually, particularly with vocal libraries, I feel like I run out of them very quickly. But I think with 200 loops here, you've got a lot of stuff to work with. Especially because you can drop certain things out. So. This is over two channels. So here, for example, we can... So this is obviously the main bit of it, the, the main deep bit. And then you've got this sort of clippy little attack bit as well. And there are quite a few loops that will have multi-channel stuff going on, which means you can drop stuff in and out. Which I know is something that people have always asked about to have that option with my drum struck libraries, which I've not provided so far, basically. Nice bit of glitchiness. stereo field going on. That's a bit of distorted nightmare stuff. Is there a synth that's better at doing percussive stuff? I don't think so. I mean, I would say Zebra's even better at percussive stuff than something like Omnisphere, which has all those drum samples in it, because um, I just think it's more flexible. I can make more percussive sounds with Zebra than I can with Omnisphere. I feel, anyway. I mean, you may disagree, and you're allowed to disagree. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> That's 
very in your face. <laughs> So hopefully, hearing this collection, you're already thinking, oh, I know where I can use that. I do take a listen to the demo tracks. Bloody hell, they're good. Um, bloody hell? <laughs> bloody hell. Bloody hell, hell. Um, yeah, some really terrific stuff beyond what I was hoping for. There's a couple that are just using the drum loops, which are really clever. And then the rest all have um, using it in context, so, you know, how you would probably use it, let's be honest. Um, but each demo track also comes with a naked version, so you only hear the loops in the track as well. Two channels, got the kick, and then we've got the noise, which creates this sort of snary hattiness. Yeah, that's a word. And so kicks on this um, envelope generator, and then the hats here too. Instead of having like snares there, we've got the, the louder noise points are actually happening alongside the, the initial kicks, which is interesting. Well, I find it interesting anyway. Cool. Uh, where were we? Oh, we're not far from the end now, are we? patch that we will do on this walkthrough. This might be a good one for finding out how it works. No, it won't because we've got... <laughs> nothing's tuned. I think that includes the comb as well. A little bit. But not much. So there you go. It's quite simple. It's a really sort of um, obvious idea, I guess, in many ways. Um, but yeah, you know what you're getting. You're getting 200 loops, 100 for Zebra HZ, 100 for Zebra 2, um, that you can just drop into your tracks and add some percussive groove and rhythm to those tracks as you see fit. I think it's um, got lots of character, lots of dynamics going on, there's plenty of atmosphere. So I think you can really build up some really cool and interesting dynamic um, percussive tracks just using this. And don't forget there's also the loops that are already in Apotheosis Volume 1 and 2, if you already have that, of course. Um, and why don't you, if you haven't? Hmm? Um, so I'm going to bring back the Apotheosis Bundle um, to add the, the loops expansion to. So if you don't have apotheosis at all you can buy all three bits of it in one go with a little bit of a saving obviously there'll be a discount um 25 discount for um newsletter subscribers um and i think that's it really any questions no good um yeah so zebra loops fun little percussive stuff um intricate distorted, lo-fi, crisp, 
all those things, really. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough. It's been a little bit brief, but let's let ourselves into 2024 gently, shall we? Yeah, I think so. Uh, especially with my broken arm. Um, yeah, so I'll be back very soon um, with some more stuff. The beginning of the year is going to be quite busy because um, I have stuff that I meant to release at the end of last year that I haven't yet, plus other stuff that I've been working on. Um, so next up is going to be a, uh, a brand new synth, um, unreleased synth by one of my favourite developers, um, which I'm making far too many patches for at the moment. So I'm doing some factory patches for that. Um, and also I'm going to be releasing a sound set for it um, when it launches as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I think that's going to be really interest interesting. Well, I don't know. I mean, it helps if you can say the word really. Um, because I don't know what interesting means. And nobody does. Okay, we've reached the end of our video and I'm clearly waffling. I'm going to sign off because um, I don't know what I'm talking about. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, and thanks for buying this if you do. Ta-ta, see you soon.